Mechs and manga are two of the greatest exports from the land of the rising sun. Both industries go back over five decades and they have been introducing new generations to great stories ever since. The Brazilian development team behind Wolfstride have brought their manga inspired tale onto the Nintendo Switch. Is this game Gundam great or full of mechanical failures? Well thank you to the publishing team for the review code and now let's find out. Three partners in a crime inherit an obscure junkyard mecha known as Cowboy after the death of a friend. Having some expertise, they enter the world's biggest mecha competition, the Ultimate Golden God Tournament. The story will have you controlling ex Yakuza and call as a cucumber Dominic Shade, who has the same fashion sense as an elite B agent. You'll also work closely with Duke, an anthropomorphic dog mechanic with a southern accent and a grumpy attitude, and lastly Knife Leopard aka Pineapple, who is a bleach blonde surfer type who pilots the cowboy mech. The world is very intriguing and has been heavily influenced by Cowboy Bebop and Redline to name a few. The cast of characters expand with each passing day and all have colourful personalities. In terms of the gameplay, this is a 2D RPG which has you controlling Shade, the jack of all trades and leader of the group. In some ways, the flow of the game is akin to No More Heroes as you will need to carry out odd jobs to earn money and parts needed to upgrade and repair your mech. These are fun button mashing activities which can reward mech parts, money and pineapples. The latter can be gifted to increase your friendship with NPCs who will in return give you some rare stuff. Carrying out quests and jobs is the main bulk of the game as you will spend less time fighting and more time preparing.
In terms of controls, these are responsive enough. I did find it a bit hard to carry out certain actions, mainly due to the animations of Shade where he runs and changes direction. This is especially true with the digging job where he has to run up and down the screen as fast as he can and seems to become slightly stuck on the environment. Both the left stick and D-pad can be used to move around, whilst the ZL button can be held down to dash, although this can be toggled to automatic if you wish. As mentioned earlier, the odd job minigames require some button mashing sequences, and these are both frustrating and fun at times. I really did enjoy the gameplay, mainly due to its simple job minigames and presentation which complements the story. Those expecting a lot of mech battles here might be surprised to see that there's an emphasis on story and preparation which at times made it feel more like a simulation of sorts. It's going to be up to the individual player of course whether this is a pleasant surprise or a disappointment. I definitely fell into the former category here though. Gameplay scores 18 out of 20. Controls take a little getting used to particularly in terms of some of the minigames but they do work well overall and they score 17 out of 20. Now traditionally manga comics were printed in black and white for a number of reasons. This may have included cost, time or just an artistic decision. The style is very fitting especially when in areas like the hangar where most of the assets and characters are pixelated and this is juxtaposed against the drawn out cowboy mech in the background. This mixture of styles works well when limited to a grayscale palette, particularly the resolution of each asset. The backgrounds are pixelated to represent a 16 to 32 bit styled aesthetic whereas everything in the foreground is thick lined with a blocky 8 bit style. The lack of colour and the contrast between the resolution between both planes make it easy to focus on your character. The developers grew up watching a lot of anime and read a lot of manga which is evident in this game. Possibly a small missed opportunity is the inability to customise your mech when swapping out body parts which would have been a nice touch although it isn't a major issue. The animated sequences capture exaggerated body bending through speed chases which is especially true with the intro. All characters have been animated as pixelated sprites whereas the mechs actually have more of a paper marionette style with each body segment having a dynamic perspective angle. The battle animation does the job although can seem a bit underwhelming at times. Character portraits are shown as still images albeit with changing expressions, again the kind of thing that you would expect from reading manga. This is especially impactful during mech battles as the cast of characters jump in to commentate and point out critical hits and impacts. It makes the whole experience feel like an interactive manga comic, however some of the font sizes may be a little too small for some. The soundtrack is a mixture of jazzy, finger snapping tunes and bombastic battle songs. The voice acting is of a good standard, with the narrative intertwined with the gameplay and its cast of characters shed more of their backstory and personality as you play. Some of the humour and tone of the content may fall a bit flat for some people but I'm sure you will be able to at least appreciate the attention to detail in delivering an interactive manga. One such example of this falling flat is the comic relief character, a robot coach who does tend to go a bit over the top, ranging from a high pitched Mickey Mouse-esque voice to something more akin to Jack Nicholson in The Shining in the blink of an eye. Did you watch Terminator? Remember how that goes? You better treat me well. Visuals have that Sin City type style which works very well, although perhaps a small splash of colour to accentuate certain items or points of interest may have been nice at times. On the whole they get 18 out of 20. Audio is of a high standard although some of the voice acting could have been toned down a tad, at least in my opinion, and this also scores 18 out of 20. Wolfstride will cost £11.99 and regional equivalents are on your screen now. Considering the quality of the gameplay, the audio, the visual style and just the overall amount of polish, I would have expected this game to cost a bit more. Raw Fury do have a skill for supporting great talent and they do sell their games at a fair price and there's a good 15-20 to 20 hours worth of story here to play through. There are a few flaws, the early hours can feel a bit slow and battles can be punishing at times owing to a few difficulty spikes but overall value scores 18 out of 20. To conclude, 
Wolfstride truly caught me by surprise simply because I was expecting more mech battles and less story driven segments. Credit though has to go to the developers for creating an anime style story full of flawed characters who shine in their own right. They want you to invest time into absorbing the camaraderie and arguments shared by each character and the fourth wall is even broken at times with them warning you that an artist will die should you decide to skip a cutscene. The gap between ranked battles can feel a bit big but that's your time to explore, take on jobs, eavesdrop on conversations or just talk to your crew. There is always something for Shay to do and how much you get out of the game really depends on how you take to that. It does have its flaws but I was too captivated by the grayscale world of mech battles and the fleshed out characters to worry too much about them. Fans of anime, manga and mechs, well this was created by fellow fans especially for you. Wolfstride gets a switch up score of 89%. Thank you everybody for watching this review. I hope you enjoyed it. Please do remember to leave a like if you did. This was written for us by Asdin over at Grinning Wolf Games. So thank you very much Asdin. Please do check out his channel. There is a link to it in the top in comment. A quick thank you to our Patreons as always for your continued support. And to each and every one of you for watching our videos. Take care and until next time, happy gaming. Thank <laughs> you.